One of the first aviation-specific weather products you'll learn to use is called an Aviation Routine Weather Report, or METAR for short, which is an observation of weather conditions at an airport. A METAR is generated from a collection of weather sensors that measure wind speed and direction, surface visibility, precipitation, cloud coverage and height, air temperature, dew point, and altimeter setting. The reported conditions are coded into a standardized format used by all airports in the U.S., allowing pilots to determine the current conditions at a glance. Many aviation apps and websites also provide a decoded report in plain language. While the decoded version can be helpful when learning to first read a METAR, it's important that you still learn how to decode a METAR on your own. METARs are updated hourly, typically around 5 and 10 minutes before the top of the hour. If the weather conditions change significantly before the next scheduled update, a variation of a METAR called a SPECI will be issued with the updated conditions. These can be identified with the code SPECI listed at the beginning of the observation. Next, we'll cover how to read each element of a METAR and then go over where to find them online and in mobile apps. METARs are presented in a set, coded sequence. It is easy to start by remembering where, when, and wind. These are always the first three pieces of information in a METAR. Where is Fort Myers, Florida? Identifiers for airports in the contiguous 48 states are preceded by the letter K. When is the next group? The first two digits are the day of the month, the 24th for this report. The time the observation was taken was 1953 Coordinated Universal Time. Converting to and from Coordinated Universal Time, also called Zulu or UTC time, is covered later in this course. The wind information begins with the direction from which the wind is blowing, in this case, the wind is from 120 degrees, referenced to true north. The next numbers are the speed, predominantly 15 knots. The G20 tells us that the maximum observed gusts have been 20 knots. Visibility follows wind, 5 statute miles in this case. Surface visibility in the U.S. will always be in statute miles, abbreviated SM. The next group shows precipitation. Light rain is apparent in this observation. RA indicates rain. The minus sign modifies this entry to show the rain is light. Precipitation is followed by obscurations. Our METAR is reporting mist as shown by the non intuitive letters BR, a French abbreviation. For aviation weather reporting purposes, any fog with a visibility of five-eighths of a mile or greater is no longer fog. It's called mist. In our sample METAR from Fort Myers, there is a scattered layer of clouds at 4,800 feet above the ground level, AGL for short, a second broken layer of clouds at 6,500 feet, and an overcast cloud layer at 7,500 feet. Coverage is reported in eighths of sky coverage. Each eighth is sometimes called an octa. Sky cover contractions let you know how many eighths of coverage are present. SKC translates to sky clear. Few indicates one to two eighths. Scattered, which is abbreviated SCT, means three to four eighths. Broken, shortened to BKN, is 5 to 7 eighths, and OVC, meaning overcast, is 8 eighths, or complete sky coverage. Only the lowest broken or overcast layer is considered to be a ceiling. At Fort Myers, the ceiling is at 6,500 feet. Temperature and dew point are next and are given in degrees Celsius. In this example, the temperature is 25 and the dew point is 19. If a temperature had been negative, it would have been preceded by the letter M for minus. Altimeter settings are preceded by the letter A, 
and are given in inches of mercury. The altimeter setting is 30.17 inches of mercury. The altimeter setting may be followed by a remarks section. In our example, the weather observer recorded a peak wind of 30 knots from a direction of 100 at 1929 Zulu. A wind shift was observed a couple of minutes prior at 1927. The next two numbers are only included from certain reporting stations and represent sea level pressure in hectopascals and a more precise report of the current temperature and dew point to the tenth of a degree. There are a few more things you should know about METARs. Beyond statute mile visibilities, the visibility for a specific runway may be given as a runway visual range in feet. RVRs are measured by sensors located near the runway and are of interest to instrument operations. Four-letter identifiers outside the continental United States will begin with letters other than K, such as M in Mexico, like this one for Mexico City, and C in Canada, Toronto, for example. Some modifiers to a METAR may follow the time-date group, if you see C-O-R following the time-date group, it means this is a correction to an observation. Auto in this position means the information comes from an automated station, like an AWOS, as here in Leesburg, Virginia. METARs generated automatically from an AWOS are updated more frequently, too, as often as every 20 minutes. The Remarks section may note the type of automated observation sensor used, an AO1 type sensor cannot discriminate between freezing and non freezing precipitation. An AO2 type sensor can discriminate. Five zeros are used to report calm winds. The plus sign in front of a precipitation contraction means that it's heavy. A minus sign would indicate light. No sign means moderate. Remarks may contain information regarding when a thunderstorm began or ended, or when some other weather phenomenon occurred. Here, a thunderstorm ended at 36 minutes past the hour, and the pressure is falling rapidly. The letter V separates two values when the indicated condition varies. So here the wind, while favoring 180 degrees, is actually variable between 150 and 210 degrees. VRB is used when the wind direction is variable and less than 6 knots. The theory is the direction is not as significant when the wind is less than 6 knots. A critical note about METARs. When data is missing, it is simply omitted from the report. Knowing the sequence is important so you can recognize when something is not reported. In this example, the fact that nothing follows the temperature is a clue that the dew point is missing. Two exceptions to this are remarks used when runway visual range or sea level pressure are usually reported but not currently available. The Aviation Weather Handbook has an entire chapter dedicated to METARs, where you can learn more about the details of each part of this report. This includes a helpful chart to decode the notations used for precipitation and other weather phenomena. Now that we've covered how to read a METAR, let's explore where you can find them. The best place to start is the Aviation Weather Center, a free online resource that includes various aviation weather forecasts and observations, including METARs. You'll also find that METARs are readily accessible in aviation apps, like ForeFlight. 